Welcome to another episode of MSK Coding. This episode will be a Python program explaining video. The Python program of choice is the area of a geometrical shape program. You will put in a geometrical shape of your choice. It'll give you the area depending on the arguments. You can see here, these are all the shapes that will be used. Triangle, sector, trapezoid, circle, parallelogram, ellipse, square and rectangle now let's move on to the program we'll start with the first line here from math import pi comma square root this imports the pi and square root objects from the math module second line we create a list which has rectangle circle triangle parallelogram sector square ellipse and trapezoid the shapes that we are using then we sort the list in alphabetical order by doing shapes dot sort after that, we make uh, new variable shapes, and we set that to rectangle, circle, triangle, all of them, separated by a comma and a space to make it look better. Then for the fifth line here, we do x equals input, for which one of the shapes listed below do you want to calculate the area for new line substitution. So what you do is it creates a new line after it says for which one of the shapes list below and then um, in the new line it prints the list now we move on to the sixth line here if x is rectangle so if you put an x for the input well rectangle then it'll do this y comma c equals input give the link and width of the rectangle dot split i haven't seen this before what this does is it sets y and z to be the two values that you give so give the length and width length is y and the width is z and you split it up with a space after that we set y to be float of y so now y is a float and z is also a float from this one and it says print the area of the rectangle is percentage i square units so what it does is it multiplies y and z rounds it to the nearest integer and then says the area of the rectangle is area of the rectangle square units now we can run it and show you how that works f5 enter and it says for which one of the shapes listed below do you want to calculate the area for so we will start with rectangle rectangle so then just give the length and width of the rectangle and you can do whole numbers four and five but it also works with floats so we should really try that out with maybe 4.3 and 7.5 let's see that and it rounds once it prints so the answer over here will never be a float it'll always be an integer now we move on to line 11 which is the elif statement for the circle what is elif you ask well elif is like else and if merged together so it's if what you typed in for x is circle then do this y is float of input of give the radius of the circle so it's going to ask you give the radius of the circle you give it it can be a decimal float and we want to the second line in the elif statement where we reinitialize y be pi times the radius to the power of two pi r squared that's the formula for the area of the circle one to the third line in the elif statement y is round y of two so this is the old y which we're using right here what is round well it rounds it to two decimal places so instead of like 3.14159 which is 3.14 about the pi and so it sets y to the rounded version of pi r squared then it sets this print the area of the circle is percentage f square units percentage y it just substitutes the y for this percentage f 
because why is a float? A float. Then we can move on to triangle. Triangle here is on line 16, and it also uses an elastic statement. So if you type in triangle, then it would create these three variables using the dot split function. Give the three sides of the triangle three, four, five. That would be those sides. Dot split. Y is three. Z is four. A is five. Y is not a float. Z is not a float. A is not a float. And now we set B to be Y plus Z plus A divided by two. So it would be halving them. There and there and there. Then y is square root b times b minus y times b minus z times b minus a. You might recognize this as Heron's theorem. And instead of b, it's s. Instead of y, z, and a, it's a, b, and c. That's what, at least uh, how I saw it. Then it prints the area of the triangle is percentage of y. Because y is the one that we set the answer to right here. Then we want to parallelogram here. And it is on line 24. So if you typed in parallelogram, it would run this. We think the dot split function again. You can see here. It's really powerful. So y comma c is give the base and height of the parallelogram. You give the base and you give the height. Then you have y is float of y. Z is float of Z. So it turns Y into a float and Z also into a float. Then in line 28, we have the area of the parallelogram is percentage F Y times Z. Now we can move on to elif X is sector on line 29. So if you type in sector, it would run this code. So Y is float of input of give the re give the angle between the two radii then z is float of input give the length of the radii without units that means no centimeters inches that stuff a is pi r squared that's what we use for the circle but then we kind of change it up because it's a part of the circle sector and a is around a comma two you can kind of see we're creating the area, and then we're kind of partitioning it. Then we have B is Y times 360. That means it's going to take the angle between the two radii, divide that by 360, and set that to B. Then C, which is the area of the sector, is A times B, which is the area of the circle, rounded times y by 360 then it says print the area of the circle is percentage f percentage c c is a times b and c is the area so the area of the circle is well whatever the area is and then we move on to or here on square line 37 so if you type in square, it would run this. This one's going to be pretty easy here. So y is float of input. Oh, give the side length of the square. Then z is y to the power of 2. You can even make a new variable for this. You can just use y. But I want to make a new variable for this one. Then it says, print the area of the circle is area. I think you've already gotten how this last part works. Ellipse. Ooh, this is nice. If you type in the lisps, it would do y is float <coughs> of input of give the length of the major axis of the ellipse, which is the longer part of the ellipse, I think. Then z is float of input of give the length of the minor axis, which is the smaller axis. So that all gets turned into a float because it's a string if it doesn't get converted. Y and Z are now floats. So now we set A to be pi times Y times Z, which is going to be the formula for the area of an ellipse. 
major axis times minor axis times pi. Ooh, and you have to divide by 2 at the end. That's something that I didn't notice until now. Print the area of the ellipse is percentage F, percentage A. Now we move on to trapezoid. We're almost finished. It's the last one, actually. So, if x is trapezoid, y, comma, z is input, give the top and bottom side length dot split. So, when you use the dot split, you can put a float or an int here. When I tried to do that, it didn't work. So, we have to convert it afterwards. So, give the top and bottom side lengths, you give them, like, three and four, let's say, and then, you can put decimals, actually, that's why they're floats here. Then A is give the height of the trapezoid, it's a float this time, and you can give, like, phi or something. And this is the formula for the area of a trapezoid. So, B is Y plus Z, that would be three plus four, which is seven. And then 2 right here, so divided by 2, and we're just 3.5. 3.5 times 5 is something, and that would be the area of the trapezoid of 3, 4, and 5. And so we have the last line of this program is print the area of a trapezoid is percentage F, percentage B. Now that I've explained every shape, we can run them. So we'll start out with the first one in alphabetical order, circle, circle, give the radius, 3, and that's the area of the circle, we do pi r squared, and you see what there's zeros, there's, and that's not pi r squared, because pi r squared would be infinite, that's because we've rounded it, so, You've done circle. And you can do control L to clear the terminal. You can do ellipse now. Give the length of the major axis. It would be, let's say, 3. We know 6. Because minor axis would be 3. And that would be the area of the ellipse. And we didn't round it this time. So I can show you that it only cuts to um, an amount. So it doesn't show infinite ones. Because I can't calculate that much. Parallelogram, parallelogram. Put the base in height, 4, 5. And that's the area. Because all we need to do is multiply. Ooh, let's clear it first. Now we can run it. A rectangle. Give the length and width. Four and five. Yeah. So. And we can do it again. Sector. This one is always the most interesting because it takes a lot of math. Go to the angle, use five. No, that's not an angle. That's 90 could be the angle. No, just to show you, 360 is a full circle. And so you can do three here. And it should do 20 and two seven because that would be the whole circle area 360 degrees is whole circle yeah nice now five enter one two square side length four it's gonna say 16. maybe i should try doing what i should try doing decimals actually now so, trapezoid, I can do trapezoid, there, go to the top and bottom side lengths, I'm pretty sure it'll accept floats, so 3.2 and 5.6, 
Height is 4.9. Oh, that's the area of the trapezoid. Nice. Now, the last one, triangle. And I used Heron's Theorem for this. 3, 4, and 5. So, these are the examples, and yeah, hope you like this. Thanks for watching this video. One thing to note is that by the end of September 2019, I used to have 50 subscribers, and I'm at 42 at the time of the recording. So, if you're one of the many people who hasn't subscribed but really likes the video, please subscribe. It would help a lot. And thank you for watching. Ooh, one thing else is that in the description, we have all of the code if you want to copy and paste that into your python interpreter you can i'm using visual studio code for this python 3.6 bye